Good That's day. the sort of Thank facial you. hair I'm aiming for. <laughs> well, hello and welcome back to The Shallow Proclamation. My name is Thomas and I'm joined by... Myself, Paul. Welcome, Paul. Um... So we are on part three of The Sensorites, which is a classic Doctor Who story. We've been enjoying it so far, especially the design of The Sensorites. I think we should get straight into it. Do give us a like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with our videos. We're, we're bringing them out on a, on a regular basis, aren't we? Mm. Uh, so this episode, there you go, a bit of pointless yeah. trivia for you. Uh, this episode has the distinction of being the first ever episode of Doctor Who to be broadcast later than scheduled. Oh, because Grandstand horror. overran beforehand. <laughs> I think. <laughs> wow. Do you reckon people stayed up? What until like six instead of five fifteen or something? <laughs> yeah. Might need to reschedule dinner a little bit. <laughs> You were absolutely right, Doctor. I've just noticed something. The story before this, uh, well, two stories before. So the keys of Marinus was all about keys. This story is all about locks. Sometimes they trust me. Yes, and I assure you, we should make good. You heard it here first. <laughs> I feel like it might have benefited from us hearing the voices in his head at times. I think that would be done if it was made nowadays. You'd hear lots of whispering in the background. Yeah, yeah I think that would be a really good way of doing it. I mean, if you want, I can do that for the rest of the episode. <laughs> so you can just throw it in when you feel like it's the right moment. That's the sort of facial hair I'm aiming for. <laughs> that's like a... That's Let's put like it on a upside down. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a comb over, except done with the beard. So, like, if you can't grow any hair on top, just comb your beard up your cheeks onto your head. <laughs> I think the problem with this one's voice and these few as they've been talking, the other ones had this slightly kind of whispered thing going on. So he just sounds like he's talking normally under his mask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sir. Just sounds like when you went to get your groceries during yes. COVID. I would not exactly. <laughs> Here's your change. <laughs> oh, crumbs. Grandfather, he's unconscious. There is no hope. Your friend is dying. That's about out of nowhere. Hmm. Crumbs. There we go. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's good that it's kind of changed a bit. You know, the first episode, obviously, we're just on the spaceship and we haven't got any sensor rights at all, apart from right at the end. So there's a lot of suspense being built up. Last episode, we had two sensor rights on the ship. And I suppose we didn't really know, did we? Kind of, are the sensor rights good? Are they bad? It was kind of hard to tell who was really in the right, who's in the wrong. Um, yeah. So this is good. I mean, I quite like, you know, the fact now we're down on the sense sphere. You, I like the fact that there are clearly a couple of guys who are... You know, a couple of sensor rights, they're the bad ones. But yet yeah, these guys appear to be... The rest appear pretty, you know, sort of peaceful. Um, not necessarily hostile. Um, so there's a good... I like the way that you've got that dynamic. of so It's not just, here's a monster, here's an alien or whatever it is, and they're the baddies. Um, it's more sort of kind of... There's factions amongst them, you know, kind of... The elders and the city administrator and... It's a bit more political, I suppose, in that sense. Um, and I like the idea as well that the, you know, they t I, mean, I wonder whether it will come into it more. They've talked a bit about sort of the water just for the elders and the water for everyone else, the, uh, the, the elders and the different castes. You know, there's an attempt to kind of have a bit of world building there, even if we haven't seen lots of it yet. Um, it's felt like there's quite a lot of sensorites wandering around that gives it a sense of a being a real place rather than... You know, it's sometimes because of Doctor Who's limited budget, it can feel like there's only like four of these creatures and that's the only four that exist. Whereas it does feel to me at least like they're down on a planet and I could conceivably believe that there are sensorites everywhere, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. It feels like the first episode where the Doctor is really someone you'd want to be with. Like you feel like you're in safe hands with him. Mm. Um, 
some of the earlier episodes, I think actually you actively didn't want to be <laughs> in his presence when he uh, almost stoned that guy to death and <laughs> other, you know, electrocuted Ian in the TARDIS. And um, yeah, but now it feels like he definitely is the Doctor. Yeah, he's less ambiguous as a character at this point. You know, he's clearly a, a, a pretty good guy in general. Mm. Yeah, I think that is the case, isn't it? That you're right. You're not getting that sense anymore of kind of the Doctor being uh, sort of maybe just uh, yeah harsh or um, disinterested in other people. He does seem much more like the the main character and the you know the hero maybe not in the conventional sense that we think of heroes kind of saving the day all the time but there's been more of that you know like you say and that's certainly been the case as the series has gone on i'll be really interested to see kind of what changes when we, i mean obviously we've got another story yet but when we get into season two it'd be interesting to see kind of how the if the dynamic changes again quite quickly you know if it's very much established by then and there's a real obvious change of tone um I don't know. I don't know whether it will be as may, you know, even though it is a different series coming up. I don't know whether it will be as marked change just because of the way they shot things there and everything ran so much. You know, just one thing into another. Anyway, I don't know how much of a gap there was between series one and two, really. So, whereas you know, in modern Who, you know, there'd be quite a big gap between one series and the next. Um, hmm. So you can see how things might change a lot between series as they make decisions whereas if you're just con constantly filming more stuff um, I don't know how much but anyway that's beside the point we'll see when we get there but. absolutely mm. well thanks so much for watching people and uh, do give us a subscribe if you'd like to join us for the next episode um, thank you Paul thanks Thomas yeah and thanks everybody we'll catch you next time for episode 4 bye bye Goodbye.